Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing the new version of the wireless Hori Pad, the USB-C edition. Now, today's review is really going to be a story of redemption for me because the last few Hori products that I reviewed, I wasn't too happy with. However, the new edition of the wireless Hori Pad, like a phoenix rising from its ashes, actually fixes a couple of really important issues from the last controller that were really just annoying a lot of people. And by the end of this review, I'm actually going to say that the new wireless Hori Pad ends up being actually one of my preferred controllers for the Nintendo Switch. However, everything isn't perfect, and there's a couple of points that are really important that we need to discuss about this controller, but we're going to get to that in the review. So now, without further ado, as usual, let's start with a close-up in the controller and get an idea of what it's offering. Now, if we start with the box, I have to admit that Hori probably makes one of the most visually appealing uh, controller boxes out there. And although they are an officially licensed brand by Nintendo, they are also the ones that you can sometimes mistake for an actual Nintendo product. However, if you clearly look at the box, it's clearly indicated that this is made by Hori and not Nintendo. However, they do put the Mario, the Super Mario branding really at the forefront. Now the sides of the box are pretty standard. On one side you have the controller showing it being plugged in and on the other you have the first major change that Hori has made at the forefront which is the fact that they've changed the micro USB to a USB-C uh, connection. And lastly if we take a look at the back we have the main features of the controller which is a built-in rechargeable battery like I said with a USB-C adapter. We have that the controller features a full motion control and also that it's designed with ergonomic grips on the side. Now when we get in the box, this is what you have. You have an instruction manual, you have a USB-C cable and you have the controller. We're not going to talk about the instruction manuals, so we're just going to toss that aside. We are going to take a few seconds however to talk about this cable because the original wireless Hori Pad, not only was it a micro USB connection, a lot of people had major problems with it because it did not even come with a charging cable. And especially the fact that it's a micro USB and the switch uses USB-C means that if you didn't have a spare micro USB cable, you actually didn't have a way to charge the controller with what came in the box. So when I'm talking about a story of redemption, I really meant it because a lot of people were slamming Hori for not including any charging cable with the first wireless Hori pad, especially since they chose to put the charging method as micro USB, because basically the switch uses USB-C, and if you don't have a spare micro USB cable lying around, you actually had no way of charging the controller with what you purchased. So they really listened to feedback, and not only did they change the charging method to USB-C, meaning that you can actually use the Switch's charger itself to charge this controller, but they actually included the cable that theoretically they didn't have to, but I think they learned their lesson and they put the extra money to actually include that in there. But that's enough about the cable, let's just put it aside. Now we get to the controller. And honestly, this is one of my favorite overall controller designs that I've tried so far for the Switch. First of all, if you remember my review of the wired Hori Pad, my most hated feature of that controller was that ridiculous idea of a removable D-pad with buttons underneath. They put a traditional D-pad, and this is a really solid D-pad. The diagonal inputs input really well, rocking motions are really good on it. I, I actually really like this D-pad. Secondly, ergonomics wise, this is a controller that is made for larger hands. It's larger than the original uh, Switch Pro controller. And for me, that's a really positive aspect. Overall, in my hands for really long gaming sessions, this is actually the most comfortable controller I've tried so far. Thumbsticks as well, this controller is the closest so far that I've tried to the original Pro Controller. I really like the thumbsticks on the original Pro Controller. They have just the right amount of give and resistance. And this one has, I would say, in all the third-party brands, the closest to those original thumbsticks. Now, the rest of the face buttons are your standard fair clicky buttons. And if we move on to the triggers, 
we have clicky triggers at the back and at the front, which is something I like. I don't like triggers at the back that are mushy. I like the clicky ones. So once again, another positive aspect for me. And like I said, the first major design change that they made on this controller is the USB-C charger, which we're looking at once again. Lastly, before we flip the controller around, the ergonomic uh, design here on the controller are texturized and actually they feel really good in hand. I actually thought this was gonna be a gimmick and not actually change anything about your sensation, but no, the texture on them actually really feels good over long playing sessions, and it does just give you that right amount of resistance. Now let's flip the controller around. And if you're wondering why we're looking at the bare back of a controller, it's that this is maybe the first disappointing thing about the wireless HoriPad. There are no macro buttons on it. It's just a standard controller. Feature-wise, I find that they really could have integrated macro buttons and hit a home run with this controller, but unfortunately they didn't, and that's one of the lacking features. So since there's really nothing to see here, let's go around the rest of the features of this controller after that, this controller, like I said earlier, does feature full motion control. The motion control is very responsive and very good, but I'll be honest, all the third-party brands nowadays have pretty much figured out the accelerometer stuff. This controller does not have NFC compatibility, so if you're looking for reading Amiibos, you're going to have to keep one of your Joy-Cons or the Switch Lite itself close by, because unfortunately there is no NFC reader on this controller. And the last thing, this controller syncs like the Pro Controller. So if you're used to those controllers where you hold the home button down to get them into sync mode, there's actually a syncing button here that you have to hold at the top. So if you're not the type of person that reads the instructions, just let you know that it's there. It's a really easy sync. It's exactly the same as the way you sync the Pro Controller. Now, I've brought my Switch Lite into frame here to demonstrate the last and most surprising feature about this controller. And this is something that I just don't get that more third-party brands haven't figured out. Yes, folks, this controller can wake your Switch up, which is a surprising feature and a really pleasing one. So if you're looking for a controller other than the Pro Controller that can actually wake your switch up without having to physically get up and push your power button while this controller can do it. Perfect. So now that we have a pretty good idea of what this controller is working with, what its features are, and just what it looks like, let's put it through its paces and score this controller. Now, if this is the first review that you see of mine, I just want to let you know that I have a specific video on my channel that explains exactly in detail how my scoring process works. But don't worry, if you're not into that, you'll be getting all the gist of it in this review. But if any of you really like the details, that video is out there. And one last thing before we actually get to the scoring portion of this review, I have to always remind you that this is not a sponsored video. However, I will be leaving affiliate links down below. So if you do want to help the channel out a little bit and you want to purchase this controller by using that link, you do help me a little bit. And if you appreciate any of these reviews, please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel because it really does help the visibility a lot and helps my channel grow, meaning that I get more reviews for all of you. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to the scoring. So the first section I review is the overall feel and build quality of this controller. And this is going to be a marking point because this is the first time I'm going to be giving a 5 out of 5. Now, if you are used to the official Nintendo Pro Controller, you will notice a difference with the finish on this controller. This controller is lighter and the plastic does not feel the same as the official Pro Controller. But because this section doesn't only have to do with the overall build quality, it also has to do with the feel of the controller. This controller, as I said earlier, so far in my hands, is the controller that feels most comfortable. And the build quality, although I would say a slight inferior to the official Pro Controller, still feels very sturdy and leaves no doubt that this controller will most likely take quite a beating. Now the second category I look at are special features and aesthetics, and this category is out of 10. And for this category, this controller is going to be getting a decent, but not as great 
6 out of 10. Now, what is hurting this controller is the lack of NFC compatibility and also rumble. Now, I forgot to mention that earlier, but this controller does not support rumble. And I would say that feature-wise, that was one of the most disappointing parts of this controller. I actually didn't think they would forego something like rumble since they don't really have any macro buttons or any other special features. Now, the couple of extra points it's getting is for the aesthetics on the controller because I actually really like what Hori does with their controllers. Aesthetically, it's very clean and basic, but at the same time, it really is visually appealing. And lastly, it's also getting one extra point because it can wake up the switch. It's not one of the official features that I normally rate, but there's always an opening for extra points for an unexpected but really appreciated feature. Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the actual gaming scores. And as usual, we always start with FPS and action games. Now in this category, the controller is going to be scoring a very solid 8.5. The overall ergonomics, the clicky buttons, make this a great controller for anyone playing action or FPS games. However, the lack of programmable macro buttons and rumble support does diminish a little bit your experience and make this, unfortunately, not able to score the controller any higher than 8.5, and it's just a little too bad. Next, we get to traditional 2D side-scrollers or platformers. And this is really one of the best categories for this controller, scoring a really solid 9.5 out of 10. Now, if you're wondering why I can score this controller so high in this category, it's because the absence of macro buttons actually doesn't affect platformers or 2D side scrollers as much as it does FPS and action games. And at the same time, also the absence of rumble, once again, isn't as important for the overall experience in this game. But I can't give it the perfect score because it is lacking those features and this controller could be better if any one of those two were present. Next, we move on to one of my favorite categories, 2D fighters. Now in this category, the wireless Hori pad is a really solid entry and I'm giving it a nine out of 10. Once again, in this category, the absence of macro buttons generally isn't important and the rumble feature is really not important as if you're serious in fighters, rumble can sometimes actually throw off your timing more than help you. And the most important factor of this category is the D-pad. It is very solid on this controller. Although it's not my overall favorite that I've tried so far, it is very, very close. Now we get to our final category and that is racing or kart games. Unfortunately, this is another one of the lower scoring categories for this controller, although it's still a very solid 8.5 that I'm giving it. And why 8.5? Well, basically, it comes back to the same issues we had with the FPS games. The lack of macro buttons actually really affect this controller in this category, because who doesn't love hitting a turbo or shooting a shell with back macro buttons? And the, over, the absence of rumble, once again, diminishes the overall experience because especially for out of road conditions, rumble is actually a really interesting feature to have on your controller. So overall, it's still a decent showing, but I can't score it any higher than an 8.5. Now, if we add up all those scores, that gives this controller an amazing score of 46.5 out of 55. Now, don't get me wrong, that is an amazing score for a third party controller. However, there is one elephant in the room issue that we haven't talked about yet, and that is the price. And overall, I think that from this review, you can see that I've really liked this controller. It is one of the sort of downsides of the new wireless Hori pad, because this controller sells for $50. And that's only $10 less than the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. And I find that the trade-off for that $10, you're losing NFC, you're losing Rumble, and you're not really gaining any of those third-party features that you're sometimes looking for on a controller. Heck, I would have just settled for a turbo functionality just to say that this controller was offering you something that the Pro Controller doesn't. Now, I just wanna repeat, I like this controller. However, we have to have real talk or else it isn't a review. And honestly, you really have to ask yourself if you're willing to trade off for this controller. However, it is, like I said, 
one of the most comfortable controllers that I've ever had the pleasure of playing with. Even more comfortable than the official Pro Controller. Like I said, if you have slightly larger hands, this controller will be much more comfortable, in my opinion, than the official Pro Controller. And like I said, even though I love this controller, I do have to tell that with Hori, it's sort of been like this on all their other products. There's always one feature that sort of sours it a little bit for me. And in this case, it's just the trade-off value for money. If this controller was $40, I would have no problem with the lacking features and the fact that you don't necessarily trade it off for, like I said, turbo or macro buttons or anything like that. But at $50 for a third-party controller, I feel like they should be giving us something back for those trade-offs. But overall, as the scoring showed, this is a very solid controller. So if you are comfortable with those features that you're losing and you're willing to trade the extra comfort for those lack of features, I guess the $50 could be worth it for some of you out there. And I've got to say that the upgrade to USB-C and the inclusion of that cable really, really helped this controller. Because by the way, this controller was $50 even when it was micro USB without a cable. And at that price, with that trade-off, I would say that it would be a definite no for this controller. So when you're purchasing this controller, make sure you look for the USB-C edition. On some websites, it's actually really hard to make sure you're getting the USB-C edition. On Amazon, it really has to be in the product description or in the product name, or you could be getting the older version. But like I said, I'm going to link the USB-C version in this video. So if you want to be sure and help me out at the same time, once I'm repeating myself, you can use the affiliate link down below and you're going to be sure to be going to the USB-C version. And just before we go, I have to remind you guys one last time, don't forget to like and subscribe if you've appreciated this video. Also activate that notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll be seeing you all in my next video.